Um, good evening. I'm calling to order the joint meeting of the Arlington Select Board and the Arlington Board of Assessors for Monday, August 16th, 2021. This is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan. Yes, thank you. John Hurd. Yes. Len Diggins. Yes. Eric Hellman. Yes. And for the Board of Assessors, Bob Greeley. Bob, you're muted right now. Yes. Okay, thank you. And Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sandy Pooler. Here. Doug Heim. Present. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting is being conducted remotely consistent with an act signed into law on June 16th, 2021, that extends certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The act includes an extension until April 1, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's order of March 12th, 2020, which suspended certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced in the agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda of materials also found on the town's website using the Novus agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. Um, I'll now turn to the chair of the Board of Assessors, Robert Greeley. Mr. Greeley. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, I would just like to say a few words. As we all know, we are here tonight to fill a vacancy on the Board of Assessors. I do not use the word replace because I do believe Kevin P. Feely is irreplaceable, not only as a member of a board of assessors, but as a personal friend. I have been a friend of Kevin's for 55 years. I have also served for 35 years on the board of assessors with Kevin. And if you may indulge me for a minute, I would like you to know that Kevin has roughly served this town for 70 years. His first job was on a honey wagon. Does anybody know what a honey wagon is? Those were the days when the town of Arlington, okay, would collect garbage. And some of you still may have holes in your backyard from where you kept the garbage. And believe it or not, it would go to the Pitorino Brothers, which was the Shell gas station on Grove Street, and then it would go to the piggeries in Lincoln, believe it or not. Kevin then went to Holy Cross. He then got his law degree. He then hooked up with Kevin White, who was the mayor of Boston when Kevin was secretary of state. Kevin was Kevin White's purchasing agent, director of city hospital when they merged and director of the housing authority. As time went on, Kevin ended up over at the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority as the director of procurement. As far as his Arlington service, for years he was a town meeting member. He served in what we used to call the old recreation committee. He was on the town democratic committee. And where you all sit today, Kevin sat there in 1964 to 1970. He then was the leasing agent for the town of Arlington for a number of years. And then in 1980, June of 1987, he was appointed to the Board of Assessors 
where, as you all know, he sat until his recent death. All I can tell you is I cannot tell you how much I miss him. I miss him as I do my three brothers. And as far as I'm concerned, I never met a higher, classier, more compassionate man of integrity than Kevin Bailey, and I miss him dearly. Thank you. I would now like to ask you all to have a moment of silence in Kevin's memory, please. Thank you. I would now like to make a motion where I nominate Steve DeCourcy as chairman of the joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Assessors. I will second that. Attorney Heim, do you want to run the vote and then we'll... I, I, I thought I asked for a vote. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. We have a, a, a motion in a second, but Attorney Heim will call the roll. For that, thank you, Mr. Greeley, and, and thank you for the tribute to 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 Mr. Feely. It, it uh, uh, we all knew Kevin and and appreciated him as a person for all the and for the service that he he gave to the town over the years. So so thank you for the uh, for the tribute, Mr. Greeley. Mr. Uh, DeCourcy, before we take the vote, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, on a nomination for Mr. DeCourcy, the chair of the select board to administer the meeting. Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. Greeley? Yes. Mr. Um, Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank, thank you, Attorney Heim, and uh, thank you. Um, so we're, we are here tonight in, in the joint meeting um, to select an interim assessor for the period to run through next April. And again, for the public's benefit under chapter 41, section 11, where there is a vacancy on a board that has two or more members as the board of assessors does, uh, when a vacancy occurs, the interim uh, or the vacancy is filled by a joint meeting of the remaining members of the board and the full select board. And so we, we had this earlier this year for the select board. Recently, we had a housing authority appointment that was governed by a different statute. Um, so I just want to provide a little background on that. We have five candidates this evening and I will name off the big candidates. Uh, James Darty, Guillermo Hamlin, Gordon Jamison, Philip Lonis, and William Zagata. And what I would like to do is by alphabetical order, call each one of the candidates up to present to the board uh, for a minute or so in terms of uh, why they are interested in the interim appointment. Um, they have all submitted written materials. I will then turn to the joint meeting for any questions of each of the candidates one by one. And then we will then go to a nomination process. Um, before I start, does anybody have any questions? Yes, I have a, a point of order, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Two points. Um, I uh, submit for consideration. I know that the board of select, the select board, has appointed interim um, uh, members who express an interest in not seeking the seat. There clearly is interest in this seat, and I wonder if uh, there should be a discussion as to that criteria for this interim appointment. The other thing is, uh, I would like to disclose. Um, to the joint body that I represent Mr. Doherty as his counsel. And if he is nominated, I will be recusing myself from the vote. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. O'Connor. And one thing I'll say on the first point, and I think members can ask questions of each one of the candidates. The only requirement, and Attorney Heim, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong here, the only requirement for the appointment is that the individual is a registered voter. Uh, in the town of Arlington. That is correct, Mr. DeCourcy. Okay, okay. So, so I think to that first point, I think individual members can, can consider that. And, and if it's something that we wanna talk about as we talk about the candidates, I, I think that would be the more appropriate time to do that. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so if we could, let's move to the candidates and we'll start with uh, James Doherty. 
if he we can promote him um, to present to the board, to the boards. And, and while you're doing that, Mr. Chair, if I could. Um, Certainly. Could we sort of have a standing question of all of the five candidates, if they could just make a statement on whether um, they are applying for this to fill the remainder of the term, or if they're applying for this and right now have intentions to run for the position. Certainly. Mr. And Mr. Thank you. I'm sorry. Sorry, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Chair, may I raise one other point? Sure. I just want to make sure that it's clear that that uh, Ms. O'Connor uh, spoke with me about uh, the conflict of interest and I appreciate her disclosure. Um, I would just uh, respectfully suggest that uh, any questions for candidates are also saved until after nominations are made so that Mrs. O'Connor is not stuck in a situation where she has to choose which candidates she might ask questions of um, before nominations are made. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, you know, I appreciate that for, for Ms. O'Connor. The only thing on that is if a member um, feels that they need a question prior to making the nomination, we'll, we'll have to address, address that when we come to it. But let's get the presentation, Understood. see what happens with the nominations, and then we can take it from there. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Sure. Okay. Um, good evening, Mr. Doherty. Good evening, Mr. DeCorsi, board members, former fellow board members. Um, never a dull moment when Jim Doherty um, elects to uh, uh, use his uh, constitutional rights. Um, just uh, because the issue was addressed, I was actually not going to bring it up because I've spent um, the last couple of years listening to my, my name be badgered through a very open process and, and misrepresented. However, we're gonna cut to the chase here. Um, the board has a long history, as the chairman just mentioned, of st staying out of politics as it relates to their board, um, and um, in my opinion, other boards as well. Namely, um, appointing a prior member, if qualified, which I would suggest I am uh, eminently qualified. Um, and um, I would ask you to uh, do the same here. As Mrs. Wynn Stanley disclosed, I spoke to her personally. I requested that she um, abstain, not from a standpoint that there's a conflict, but to the standpoint that people have uh, attempted to smear people's reputations in a ledge there. Are. Having said that, I would simply ask the board, I'm here for two reasons. I spent 21 years on the board of assessors with Kevin Feely. I will add one thing, nobody can out talk Bobby, good friend of mine, but I will say he, Mr. Feely's grandfather was the school physician at St. Agnes School that I attended as well. So, and his son graduated with me, so we don't have a conflict there as well. Um, but finally, what I would say is this, this board in my opinion and demonstrated most recently, and thank you, Mr. DeCorsi for recognizing in your uh, memory of history, my son, James, you were correct as it related to the Derby. And thank you, Mr. Hurd, by the way, for your kind comments of uh, improvements we hope to do in Arlington. I've probably gone beyond my one minute. So I will simply say I'm here um, because I would be honored for four months, six months to fill Mr. Feely's seat as a tribute to him. I have no intention of taking the stipend, which will be hopefully seed money for a scholarship fund for everyone and anyone who you have heard comment on the gentleman about his compassion in public service. And beyond that, I won't bore you with my uh, details uh, of my life, but I'd be more than welcome to answer any questions on the road. And I wish the best to, um, to the um, other three or four candidates. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Darty. The second candidate is Guillermo Hamlin. And, and while we're waiting for Mr. Hamlin, I, I wanna thank all of the candidates for, for their willingness to serve the town. We have one spot to fill, so there'll, there'll be one person, but we appreciate all five for uh, submitting their interest. Um, Mr. Hamlin, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, hopefully okay. you can hear me. I, I can, and, and uh, given that the precedent that was set, I, I will be generous on the minute <laughs> or so that you have to present to the board, but the, well, the, the floor is yours now. Thank you, uh, because I actually uh, request if I can share a video. 
I had I have a video presentation that's under three minutes. Well, is, is it is it between two and three? Because I, I Mr. Darty did go over, but if it's over two minutes, that's that's beyond what we are um, allowing this evening. So you you can choose how you spend your time, but. Um, if it if it goes over, you get up to about the two minute mark. I'm gonna have to cut it off. Um, if you, uh, I'll proceed with uh, a presentation here today orally. I have a okay. video. Did not know about this criteria, but I'll proceed accordingly. Um, hello, my name is Guillermo Hamlin. I live on 1228 Massachusetts Avenue, and I am also a Precinct 14 Town Meeting member. I'd like to thank the uh, Joint Select Board and Board of Assessors meeting here today in filling the vacancy left by Kevin Feely. Uh, I'd like to thank the speaker who went before me uh, talking about Kevin Feely. Unlike everyone else here, I don't know Kevin Feely in the breadth or to the extent that anyone here does. I do know that as a opponent of his, and I don't mean that in any negative connotation, but as a competitor, he was very generous and kind with me. He did not need to be. Um, we both were quite polite, but what I appreciate was being gracious with his time and allowing us to compete openly, to share ideas. And ultimately, when I had uh, lost to him on April 2021 for the Board of Assessor seat, it was an honor. Uh, and the reason why I'm submitting my name here today is to fill, these, to fill this role for the purposes of the vacancy, meaning that if it's of the interest of the board, if it's of the interest of the, the board of assessors, I am more than willing to just fulfill this uh, vacancy until the next town meeting, in which case we'll allow for an open election of whoever may be interested in running for it. Uh, I have spoken to my fiance about this matter and we decided and or decided to, if we were to do this interim appointment, that it would be nice to slide off, fulfill my obligation in getting married, enjoy a wedding, and to not endure three full years of an election cycle. And my skill sets vary from government access television. I've served on Community Action Agency of Somerville, a federal anti-poverty nonprofit that is a cap agency for the city of Cambridge and Somerville. I've served under its finance committee. We've scheduled and participated in regular audits. We make sure that the fiscal health of our organization is strong so it can align with our strategic planning growth. Ultimately, I see myself as a para-assessor, aiming to assist Bob Greeley, Mary with Stanley O'Connor, and the assessor's office cross the finish line and to get the work done. I'm not gonna outwit these incumbent assessors, nor do I want to misrepresent my uh, expertise here. But I believe that with help, my perfect attendance, I could help us get over the finish line and then do the public service as needed in memory of Kevin Feely, fill out his vacancy, and then let it be an open seat. Thank you, and I yield back my time. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Hamlin. Um, the next candidate is Gordon Jamison. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Jamison. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, very quickly, I'll truncate my uh, presentation. So thanks for the opportunity. When I considered how I might best to assist the board in its work, it's certainly not as an assessor, because Mr. Greeley was one of those. It's not legal. Mr. Then Stanley O'Connor has a good uh, long-term standing in that field. And I have no doubt that the assessor and the staff can provide property owners with accurate assessed valuations from a sound property data set. So how best to leverage my doctoral business problem solving abilities, plus my six terms of town meeting, followed um, my following of the assessors and board activity for many years, and as physical resource task group card chair. Well, my objective is to bring a fresh look at the responsibilities of a board member. Three things that I would focus on as a member to help ensure the accuracy of that data set, or the data set, I group into macro, micro, and financial impact. The 14 to 15,000 different parcels in town are grouped into neighborhoods. Um, with the recent population growth in town, the completion of the elementary schools, and looking at a medium mean median analysis of residential properties in those neighborhoods, um, one might wish to either increase the number of neighborhoods, merge some of them, or tweak them. This, this approach also provides a great way to look for outliers for QAQC control. 
the micro part. That's, that, that's dropping down to the property card information. Physical Resource Task Group did an analysis with, with the assistance of the assessor and his staff, and then we've shared this information with them. And we determined that 11% of the properties had not been visited in the past 20 years, which we found, I have to say, shocking. And that only 26% of the properties, residential properties, had been internally inspected within the last five to six years, which includes the last 10 year major reassessment. I think that asks, draw some questions about Patriot's properties and um, their performance metrics in their contract. So they're the major source of information for the property card information. And finally, financial. Um, not everyone under, everyone thinks about the valuation of their property, but an important, um, as a member of the finance team, the assessor's department uh, determines new growth in conjunction with the inspectional services department. So I'll just have one, one point that I want to address that I think um, makes us want to look at that process in greater detail. If you look at Zillow, which has a lot more money than we do to analyze numbers, uh, they list um, residential properties as being 25% below market rate. Now that's no problem for the, the taxpayer if everyone's 25% low, but it does question whether we're also making our new growth 20%, 25% below where it should be. So in conclusion, I hope to bring a fresh percent perspective to the board and if I can accomplish these objectives over the next six to eight months, or at least get them moving, I see no re reason to run for a re-election in the spring. And I thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Jamison. The next candidate is Philip Lonis. Good evening, Mr. Lonis. Yes. First, because it, it rarely happens, thank you for correctly pronouncing my name. <laughs> It certainly doesn't uh, spell and pronounce the same way, at least in English. Uh, so you wanna know why I'm interested in this position and what I hope to do for it, et cetera. Yes. Uh, first, uh, as Guillermo related, Mr. Feely was just an incredibly classy guy and it was an incredibly cl classy race that was run. And I just, Really appreciate that. And I thank you, Mr. Grilly, for that um, memoriam to him. Uh, as I noted in my letter, the town lost a living treasure when he passed. Uh, I had really hoped to get to know him better. Uh, so I'm a CPA and CPAs have fiduciary responsibility. That, that, that's kind of how we look at the world. And this is really a very fiduciary position where it's not a policy position. It's a position where you have to look at what the rules are and implement them as they are. And the other thing that you need to do is to be able to explain what turns out to be more complex than one would think to the individual taxpayers when they have appeals as they will in many cases. And since I deal with the federal and state tax code and explain that to many consumers, I have a good ability to translate that kind of thing into something that the common lay person can understand. Uh, and I think that I can bring that to this office. And as um, Mr. Uh, really mentioned to me, he remembers my work in the assessing office, I'm sorry, the appraising office of Charles R. Laverty, which I did as my first job out of uh, college. Um, so I'm kind of familiar with the data sets and manipulating the data sets. And I'm afraid I'm so old that that was actually when it was a bit of a trick to computerize things. Uh, the world has uh, moved forward since then. Uh, unlike everyone else, I will be straightforward. I had intended to run again. Uh, I'm kind of grieved to be applying for this seat in the sense that it's open, but I also would feel that uh, in a sense, I owe it to him. And as the uh, next leading vote getter, I think I have the most mandate from the public, but that's not the only criterion on which you need to base this, but I pointed out. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lonis. And our fifth candidate is William Zagata.
Good evening, Mr. Zagata. Good evening. Um, my name is Bill Zagata. I'm a certified uh, general real estate appraiser, and I've been appraising uh, in uh, the greater Boston area for about 15 years. Um, I've lived in Arlington for a bit over five years. Um, in my uh, professional experience, I've had the opportunity to assist um, a number of cities and towns with more complicated um, appraisal problems, uh, you know, specialized properties. Um, I've done work, for example, up in Beverly on the Cummings Center, which is a, a 2.1 million square foot um, office complex. And that's something uh, I, I do annually uh, for the city. Um, but, you know, the reason I, I've been interested in this position is, you know, although I've been in Arlington for a very short time, um, you know, given my professional background, I, I thought that this would be a good way to uh, become more engaged uh, with the, the community and the government. And my experience as an appraiser, uh, working on both sides, working for towns and against towns, um, I think I, I have a, a perspective that will be, um, you know, very important to to help the board and to help um, citizens who have you know questions about their valuation. How do we get to that valuation? Um, and I would look forward to the opportunity to serve the community and uh, be part of the, the Board of Assessors going forward. Um, in terms of running for a three-year term, I would like the, the chance to fill this position uh, in the interim. And I, I foresee you know, things going well and uh, you know, taking a uh, you know, chance to uh, run for the, the three-year position at the end of that. So, um, you know, thanks a lot for this opportunity, and I hope to meet you uh, in person at uh, some point in the very near future. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Sagata. Um, okay, so that is the, the the five individuals, and and as we just heard, that uh, you know, we we really um, these are, these are all individuals who are are willing to. To serve the town, we appreciate them stepping up to do that. Um, at this point, um, unless there are any questions that people have before we open the nomination process, I'd like to take a motion to open nominations and and then move on with that uh, process. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second that. Thank you, Mr. Hurd and and Mr. Helmuth. So, on a motion to open nominations by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. Attorney Heim. Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. Greeley? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm not going to go down the line. If, if any individuals have a nomination, if they could just signal um, to me, I will recognize the individuals who, uh, uh, who, who so indicate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I have a question of, of the five individuals, if I could. Sure. Um, I would like to ask them only because this question, since I've gotten on the then board of selectmen, now select board since 1999, um, concerning assessments in the Winchester Country Club. Um, and if an individual or individuals do not have an answer, that's fine. But it's been pointed out to me for many years that the town of Arlington um, assesses the Winchester Country Club differently, a different formula than um, the town of Winchester. Um, and it's a five to six figure difference if we stay the way we're doing it of Winchester done. So I'm just wondering if I could ask each of the candidates um, and it's okay if you don't have an answer, starting alphabetically, if I could, Mr. Chairman, through you, Mr. Doherty, um, what any uh, opinions they have regarding assessing the Winchester Country Club um, as a parcel that exists in Arlington. Hmm. Yeah, um, Mrs. Mahan, I, I appreciate the question. I, I am a little concerned about getting into a specific property discussion for purposes of, right, of this fine. evening. No, all right, that's fine. That's I, fine. I, and you know, I think it's it, an appropriate question for the assessor, but I mean, this gets into recreational land classification and other no, issues no, no, between no, Arlington that, and that, Winchester. That's fine. 
Yeah, that's Steve, fine. Steve, I've I'm tried to ask that question since 1999, and it always gets put off, so it'll stay yeah, Well, I, I, I don't think it should be put off, but I, I, I'm not sure. I'll it, answer it quickly, Steve. Okay, Bob. The town of Arlington, Winchester, Diane, had submitted to be considered chapter property, which is 61B off the top of my head. And, th and in that, all land that is not encumbered by a building, the assessment is at 25% of the fair market value. The town of Winchester, the Winchester Country Club chose not to do that with Winchester. Exactly why not, I can't tell you, but it's, a, it's a similar to an exemption that someone would receive in the town. And Winchester, I think off the top of my head in 95, submitted and qualified and hence they receive that benefit. And, and Mrs. Mahan, uh, the, uh, Charlie Foskett um, asked us specifically about that and we provided him a detailed response, just so you know. Yes, and, and, and I've seen that. So I'll save that for a future Board of Assessors meeting. And the only reason I asked the question is as the chairman is, uh, of the select board is also chairman of long range planning. Um, if uh just taking fact by fact if we assessed the winchester country club um whether it's at a 61b or the assessment that we provide to it it's a little over a million dollars um but we'll have that discussion in future meetings so i'm sorry it's just something i've been no, trying no, to get try. to the bottom of since 1999 it's all passed on that thank you okay all right, and 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 I, yeah, I, as I said, I think it's appropriate for follow up. I'm just not sure it's 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 fair to the individual candidates tonight to put them on the spot for for that type of thing. But so we we have we're within nominations now. If there are any other questions before we do that, I'll, um, we can take questions. If anybody has a particular question, if they're not sure on a particular candidate before a nomination takes place, otherwise I'll ask for nominations. I would like to nominate. Oh, yes, Mr. Greeley. I would like to nominate Jimmy Doherty. I believe that with his knowledge and experience, he would be the best candidate for the town and for the specific job. Okay, thank you. Is there a second on Mr. Greeley's uh, motion? Um, out of respect for when I first got on the board, I couldn't get any of my motion seconded. I will second for discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Okay. Uh, any other nominations? Mr. Diggins? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would like to nominate Gordon Jameson. Okay. Uh, is there a second for Mr. Jameson? I'll second that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Any other nominations? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Mr. Zagata. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Is there a second? I will second that again. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, any other nominations? I would like to, unless someone else wants to jump in, I'd like to close nominations. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd to close nominations, Attorney Heim. Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. Greeley? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Uh, Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Nominations are closed. Okay. Um, so at this point, we have three candidates, Mr. Darty, Mr. Jamison, Mr. Zagata. Um, again, I would like to thank Mr. Hamlin and, and Mr. Lonis um, for, for their willingness to serve. At this point, um, if there are any individual questions for candidates, if not, we can move right to a vote. Mr. DeCourcy, if I may? Yes. Yes. If Ms. O'Connor intends to recuse herself, I think now would be the appropriate time and she can turn off her camera and, uh, and mute her microphone so that the board deliberation wouldn't be influenced by any um, 
you know, <clears throat> perception of her, of her participation. I intend to do so. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Great. And just for the public's edification, um, because Ms. O'Connor has announced her intention to recuse herself from discussion of, of Mr. Doherty's candidacy while he remains candidate, if the board in its rounded process ends up um, uh, eliminating Mr. Doherty before a final vote, uh, Ms. O'Connor could rejoin us for that vote later, if that makes sense. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Attorney Hyde. Um, did you have a question, Mr. Diggins? Well, just Mr. Chair, my, my question is, is it appropriate you know, now for uh, members to make um, a, a statement in support of the candidate that, that they've nominated, or do you just want um, the nominations to stand on the statements that have been made? I'm fine either way, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I well, you know, I'll, I'll see what other members think. What I, what I was thinking, Mr. Diggins, is at the point of the, the nomination, that's probably where um, the statements, um, I, I'm not gonna say more appropriate because it can be, it can be done at any time. If you'd like to make a statement um, and, and you didn't do it earlier, go right ahead. Okay, thank you, Mean, and, and I'll, I'll get better at that. And, uh, a lot of times I just make the nomination and I think that there's gonna be a discussion later on and I'll keep in mind, that's not the, the case. But I just wanted to say um, in support of uh, Mr. Jameson, I, mean, uh, uh, I was at that meeting, that Fiscal Resources Task Group meeting, and I was truly impressed by the level of knowledge I mean, that he brought to the table um, and the group that he's working with uh, uh, they, they, they understand I mean, um, what assessment is about and the potential uh, that, uh, that is there for uh, new growth. I mean, and, and he's not an assessor and he, I think he made a good argument for um, why that's okay um, in this case. I mean, and I certainly have confidence that um, were there to be some need for assessor type skills, um, that a question, when a question is brought um, before the assessors that he would reach out uh, to the talent pool in town and get the answers that he needs in order to uh, answer or deal with the issue at hand. Uh, I think he brings a real energy um, to everything that he approaches me and, and I've just always been impressed by uh, Mr. Jameson and when um, I listen to him advocate for himself, I mean, uh, he doesn't need me, but I'm happy to join in um, and support and advocate for him. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Um, do any other members wish to make any statements or um, if not, we will move to, to a vote. But I'll leave that open. Okay. All right. Um, Attorney Heim, I think at this point we have three um, candidates who have been nominated and seconded um, and what we will do is we will take a vote and there'll be, why don't you explain the, the, the vote 12, six voting members now in terms of what it will um, require to be selected and, and the process if we don't have a majority here after the first round. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, in short, uh, what's required for appointment is a simple majority of the uh, participating members in a sufficient number to form a quorum. Um, so if you have a majority vote on any one of these candidates, we don't need to take any further action. If we don't get to a majority vote uh, of the joint body, what we will do is take the two top vote getters and then go on to a second round. We'll essentially eliminate the lowest vote getter um, and then take a second vote uh, based on the remaining candidates if no one uh, is able to gain a simple majority of the joint body. So I will go down the line and I will ask each participating member, understanding that Mrs. O'Connor has uh, recused herself for the name of the candidate they're voting for to make it most efficient. So with that, unless anyone has any questions, very well. Mr. Greeley. Jim Doherty. Mr. Hurd. Mrs. Sagata. Mr. Diggins. Mr. Jameson. Mr. Helmuth. Mr. Zagata. 
Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Zagata. And Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, Mr. Zagata. Uh, if I've got that count right, that is four votes for Mr. Zagata, one vote for Mr. Doherty, and one vote for Mr. Jameson. Uh, Mr. Degada has, Zagata has obtained a simple majority of the uh, joint body and is therefore uh, the selection. And thank you, Attorney Heim. And thank you. And th congratulations to Mr. Zagata. And again, thank you to all of the candidates who expressed their willingness uh, to serve the Board of Assessors. Uh, if it's appropriate, uh, Mr. Chairman, move to adjourn. Yes. Yeah. Is, is there a second? Second. Okay. On a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Heim. Mr. Greeley. Yes, sir. Mrs. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you, you very much, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Cheers. Good night. Good night.